from Earth. Is there life in the universe? Nobody really knows. But it is possible that in the space beyond us, there is life, that there are other suns giving warmth and life to worlds like ours. In the years, in the ages, in the eons ahead, we may find the answer to our question. We may find that in the space beyond us, beyond the stars, there are worlds with life far richer than our own. Tales of Tomorrow speculates about such a future. The Diamond Lens, starring Francho Tone with Louis Van Ruten. student of the microscope with all the secrets of the universe at my command. You should now die by the guillotine. The law is the law, my son, and the judgment is made. It would comfort you, Andre, if you would speak and cleanse your soul. Say now what is in your heart. Only then can you find peace. What can I say? Who would believe me? They call me mad. But I saw what I saw through the diamond lens. The diamond lens? You're puzzled. Oh, no wonder. Only I possess the diamond when it's no Only I looked through it. Only I saw the miracle. Tell me about it, my son. All my life, I dreamed of the perfect lens. All my life, as a, as a student of the microscope, I worked and starved to perfect one. But I, I failed. Time and time again, I failed. Then, one day, in the library of the Académie Française, I found an old and rare work by Anton Leeuwenhoek, inventor of the microscope. And there, I found the secret. It required an immense diamond of over a hundred carats. This diamond must be shaped by a powerful acid so that its planes ran in a particular geometric pattern. And this, wrote the master, would be the perfect lens, and through it, a drop of water would reveal a miracle. I was enthralled, fascinated by what I found. From that time on, I had one mission in life, to find a diamond like this, to make the perfect lens. But the question was, where? Where could I, a poor, poverty-ridden student, ever obtain such a gem? And then, as though fate had decreed it, a new tenant moved into my pension, a clerk in the jewelry shop, Gaston Dubois, his name. I sought an introduction to him. I carefully cultivated him. I, I spent my rent money for expensive wines to entertain him. <laughs> I've been saving this, Gaston, for just such a friend as you. What a burgundy, eh, huh, Gaston? Perfection itself. You admire perfection, Andre? I uh, admire it. I worship it. I'm grateful to you for inviting me down to share your treasure. Well, why should I not? Have you not become my dearest friend, my only confidant? Come, Gaston, a toast. A toast. To Anton Leeuwenhoek, the inventor of the magnifying glass, the man who gave the world the microscope. To the genius who first unfolded to the eye of man a thousand new and enchanting worlds. You have been his disciple for quite some time, eh, Andre? All my life. Look, Gaston. Here is a lens said to be made by the master himself over 200 years ago. Is it not a thing of beauty? Well, every man to his hobby. After all, this is mere glass, my friend. I find a greater beauty in diamonds. Diamond? Yes. In their faces and exquisite hearts, and in their infinite planes and miraculous colors. 
There's a stone in my employer's shop on the Rue de Rivoli that I would give my soul to possess at this very moment. Yeah? Why? Because it flashes and sparkles with the glories of heaven itself. I have studied it for hours. I never grow tired of looking at it. Well, it's worth 50 million francs if it's worth a sou. Did you say 50 million francs? I did indeed. Well, this must be a very large diamond. Oh, my friend, you have no idea. It's immense. Uh, yeah, I suppose you mean 50 carats, my friend. Oh, I mean 150 carats. And this is in the shop now? It is, but only temporarily. My employer trembles every time he thinks of it. You know, he's not accustomed to such transactions. He's afraid to keep it in the safe. He hides it. It was purchased for a wealthy dealer from Casablanca. He's coming to Paris <coughs> next week. Yes? Do you want to make your fortune? Well, what do you mean? You bring me this diamond, I'll make you the richest man in France. My dear Andre, you, you must be mad or, 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 or drunk, perhaps. Drunk? Yes, perhaps I am. But drunk with the promise of the future. What kind of talk is this? You stand there and ask me to steal a diamond to, to commit a crime. I, I don't care how you get it. I only ask you to bring it to me. Andre, for the love of... For the love oh, of... Yes, I, oh, you fool, I don't want to sell it. I want to use it in a scientific experiment. And I'm assured of success. Oh, hey, please, for oh, love of it. Trust me, my friend. Believe in me. You have access to the diamond. Get it for me. I'll do no such thing. You're out of your mind. Oh, oh, hey, have it, you hear? It means my career, my life. Oh, hey, let go of me. You have too much to drink. You're, you're drunk. The diamond, yes, so Get it for me. No. You crazy fool. I could be famous with this gem. And you're standing in my way. Oh, hey, please, only you. Let me go. If you won't get it, I will. Andre, Andre. Where is the diamond, Gaston? Where does Leclerc keep it in the shop? I cannot tell you. Where is it? Andre, Andre. Answer me before I kill you. Where is it? It's in the secret drawer in the cupboard in the shop. Andre. What is the meaning of this disturbance, Mr. Dupont? Do I bear the noise and yet to wake the dead? I will not have it. My other tellers are ready. Spend your money on expensive wine, but when I ask you to pay the rent, I'll pay off you! Hey! diamond back. I'll put it back. I'm your friend. The wine has robbed you of your reason. I, I will forget the whole incident. Only put the diamond back. You should have stayed at home, Gaston. You should never have followed me. I want this diamond and no one will stop me from getting it. Andre, you must be mad. This is a crime, a serious crime. It will mean years in prison. I'm willing to take the risk. I must take it. Andre, please, for the last time, put the diamond back. Very well, I've done what I can. I have no alternative but to notify the authority. I told you no one would stop me from getting I know! No one! Ah! And so, Montpellier, I killed this man. I had no alternative. I thought, what is the life of one man when I had in the pocket of my coat the secret of a miracle? When the whole world of microscopic splendor well, mon père, after that day and night, I worked to create a powerful acid that could shape the gem into a microscopic lens. And finally, I found it. A colorless liquid which affected the hard carbon of a diamond, but had no effect on the silicon of glass. I made a large supply, kept it in a water pitcher, so that no one could suspect what it was. After another week of shaping the diamond, I was ready. At last, I was ready. The 
perfect microscope. I could not wait to see what it would reveal to me, what kind of world it would show far beyond the world of the ordinary microscope. What miracle would it reveal through its brilliant prismatic heart? This was the moment I waited for, dreamed of, lived for. Microscope, huh? Yes. What, what is the meaning of this? Shortly after midnight on the 10th of November, a clerk, Gaston Dubois by name, was murdered in his shop on the Rue Rivoli. Well, it is known, monsieur, that this Gaston Dubois resided here in the pension Madame Petit and that you were his friend. I was, yes. Oh. A good friend. A dear friend. You admired him. I right? loved him. He was a man among men. Can you tell me, monsieur, were you aware that he might have had an enemy or enemy? Impossible. Oh, Gaston indeed. Dubois was a gentle soul. To know him was to love him. I, André Martin, can vouch for this. No one could have wished him harm. And now, as you say, he lies murdered. Murdered by some thief in the night who stole a dime and fled. A very curious statement, Monsieur Lapin. Very. What do you mean? Well, the matter of the diamond was never mentioned in the newspaper. How did you know it was stolen? Oh. <laughs> I assumed it was, Inspector. Oh, you assumed. You see, Gaston spoke of this, this huge diamond everywhere he went. He spoke of it to, to those he knew and to strangers alike. He made a point that it was worth 50 million francs. It might be some great temptation to a thief. Oh, I see. Uh, surely you didn't think I had anything to do with it. Oh, Monsieur Lapin, I have made no accusation. But you came here to see me. Well, yes. I saw everyone who knew Gaston Dubois. A matter of routine, you understand? Of course I understand. Oh, excuse the interruption of your scientific studies. Uh. And allow me to express my personal regrets at the loss of your friend. Mm. I can see how much you miss. Bonsoir, Bonsoir, Inspector. perfect lens, I had penetrated beyond the grosser particles of aqueous matter and found an entire new and dazzling world in a single drop of water. For hours I stared through the lens. For hours I could not take my eye from what I saw.
I was exhilarated. For me, Andre La Palme, the days of starvation were over. Now I had only to go to the Academy Francaise, acquaint the scientific division there with my discovery, and fame and fortune would be mine. Entrez, madame! <laughs> The perfect microscope. My dear Monsieur Le Palm, you must be mad. But Professor Pissarra, I tell you I have it. And uh, through it, I have seen a whole new world in a single drop of water. Fantastic. Is it? What? It is already accepted that great universes exist beyond the range of our most powerful telescope. Why is it not possible that a submicroscopic world, a different kind of world, far beyond the power of any microscope we have? And I tell you again, it is impossible, scientifically impossible. Uh, Monsieur Le Palme, if you will excuse me now, I am a busy man. But, but if you'll only listen to me. If I listened to every crackpot and dreamer who came to the academy, I would have no time for my own work. Professor Prisant, please, I only ask that you look through my microscope with your own eyes. See for yourself. Ah, there is no such thing as a perfect microscope. As long as a lens is made of glass, there are bound to be flaws, aberrations. Yes, true, true, Professor, but suppose it were made of a diamond. Eh? A diamond, you say? A pure diamond, huge in size, and scientifically shaped into a perfect prismatic pattern. A diamond, eh? And the miracle, Professor. I, I, I live nearby on the Rue Saint-Philippe. Come with me and I will show you a sight beyond your wildest dreams. Very well, Monsieur Le Palme. Your proposition intrigues me. Ah, if it is only half as true as you make it sound. Ah, please. This is the microscope you told me about, eh? Yes. Mm-hmm. But it has no lens. I have hidden the lens. It's far too valuable. Nonsense is this. You said you were going to show me. It's gone. Oh, I see. So this was just a hoax. You asked me to see a diamond lens, and now you tell me it's gone? You lied to me. After I killed the man to get it. I had the lens, I tell you. I had it. I... This is my story. Just as it happened, I swear it. Just as it happened, I saw what I saw with my own eyes, and they called me mad. They said I was insane. Oh, you have to kill me, my son. This is all. Your pair. Yes. You believe me, don't you? Tell me you believe me, my pair, that what I saw was not the product of a fevered imagination. Say you believe me. Even you do not believe. Hey. 
here, here, I'm hoping. The time has come. <laughs> I have nothing left to live for. A man without a dream is already dead. Goodbye, mon père. Goodbye, my son. Go with God, and may you sleep in peace. say what he really saw in a single drop of water. But he and he alone was the only witness. Who else in the case of Andre Lepard can draw the line between the world of imagination 